all right guys so this is our three and today we are going to be learning about cryptography and how we can implement cryptography very very quickly in uh, python using just five or six lines of code and then we are going to go into a little bit of advanced cryptography uh, but before we even go into cryptography just for people who don't know what it is it's just a way to make something unreadable so if you're passing some kind of secure data like passwords and stuff from one location to another location it's a good idea to make sure that it uh, it can't be read by someone who is kind of sniffing uh, the wi-fi packets in between or something like that so it's just a good idea to make sure it's secure and like websites like facebook and any kind of website will basically uses uh, uh, passwords and stuff uses cryptography now there are two types of uh, things that you can do when you want to hide something like make the data unreadable or some, something like that so that you can do two things first is hashing and the second is encryption now there is a very thin line between these two so for me the you can understand just to make sure in short that encryption is uh, mostly not used in uh, passwords and stuff it's just if you want to transfer a file from maybe your computer to another computer or you want to send a file then you use encryption but if you want to maybe check passwords if the password is correct or not or if you want to store passwords in your server then mostly hashing is used so facebook for example uses hashing but if you are sending a file through gmail they might uh, use encryption uh, so all right let's get started with uh, hashing so we won't be covering encryption we'll be covering hashing kind of cryptography in this video so what we are going to do is we are going to be using this library and it's called hashlib library. The cool part about this library is that you don't need to install pip install anything. It's already in built inside Python 3 plus. So make sure you're using the latest version of Python. I'm using, I'm using Python 3.6 and it should also work in future versions of Python. That should be good. So first we are going to do just import hashlib and then we are just going to create a variable. Let's call it crypt and then inside it we are just going to call hashlib dot md5 so md5 is just a kind of uh, in, um, hashing uh, algorithm it's uh, md stands for message digest and 5 is the version of it similarly there's md4 and stuff but md5 is the latest one and uh, so we are going to be using the md5 uh, hashing algorithm we are going to go into another type of hashing algorithms and all kind of hashing algorithms let's also we are also going to see which kind of hashing algorithms are also available in this uh, python interpreter uh, python version interpreter this that is python 3.6 so we are going to see that and what i'm writing over here you don't need to write it in pycharm you can just write in any python compiler that you want just a typical python interpreter will also do so we have created this hashlib.md5 and we have stored it in this variable of crypt. The second thing it needs is it needs the string which we want to convert. So we are just going to write crypt.update and then inside this we are just going to write the string that we want to hash or crypt. So we are just going to write hello over here and um, after that it's pretty easy we are just going to print out crypt.hexdigest. And that's pretty much it so what hex digest does is it converts this uh, this hello string to actual md5 and then it converts it into a hex form and then we are just printing it out so it's not gonna work it's gonna throw us an error i just want to tell you in advance as you can see it throws us an error which says unicode objects must be encoded before hashing so what we are going to do we are just going to add this b character over here which makes sure that this is not a string literal now it's going to be converting this string into a byte kind of formation so it's this is converted into byte and now it can convert this into md5 algorithm so md5 hash not md5 algorithm so let's click on play and now you can see it has given us this uh, hash thing which is encrypted and then it can be used as a way to send passwords and stuff uh, so instead of the actual password so example if you are if we were creating a password service instead of sending hello we'll actually send this md5 encrypted hash so there are also other kinds of encrypted hash and uh, let's say we want to find out the size of this encrypted hash so what we can also do is we can just print out uh, crypt dot um, I think it was digest underscore size something like that and we can click on play so this size of this thing is actually 16 characters so it's printing out 16 
Now, what we if we want to convert it into something like SHA, um, SHA, let's say 256, which is a pretty common hashing algorithm. So let's click on play and find out uh, what kind of hash it gives us. So this gives us a 32 character hash um, hash uh, string. So now we can use this one. So let's find out what kind of um, hashing stuff is actually inside Python 3.6. So for that, we can just uh, kind of print it out over here. We can just print out hashlib dot algorithms available and then we can just click on play and as you can see there are a lot of cool algorithms just inside this is the one that we are using md5 sorry this is the one we are using md5 and then this is the sha uh, 256 so as you can see there are a lot of dsa is pretty cool sha is also pretty cool a lot of cool stuff over here so but the problem with these kind of all algorithms is for example let's say we type in md5 all right so the problem with these kind of algorithm is that it can be brute forced so it can be reverse engineered and uh, it's not that safe because it can be brute forced so for example let's actually take this example of hello and let's actually remove everything else from here click on play so the decrypt password or sorry the decrypt hash is uh, not the decrypt the encrypted hash of hello is this thing so what if we do kind of a dictionary attack and we convert every part every uh, word in the dictionary to md5 we convert every word in dictionary to md5 and then we compare the md5 of every word in dictionary to this md5 that we got and whenever that uh, when we are just looking up comparing it whenever this is compared to the dictionary one and it comes to hello is going to give us kind of a true value and that is how the md5 can be broken so for example we are going to just go to google and we are just going to type in md5 uh, md5 maybe decrypt not md4 md5 decrypt and let's go to this first one which i've already gone in the past so let's go to this first one and now we can just uh, kind of paste this uh, hash that we have got inside this md5 encrypt and decrypt service so we can just click on decrypt and uh, over here as you can see it found it out very very quickly it says uh, we found hello and uh, this is the hash so md5 is no longer as you can see considered a secure way to save passwords so yeah but if we like for example if we type in something very very complex let's say let's say this all right and let's actually calculate the md5 of this thing so it's very difficult to find the md5 reverse lookup because this is not a word that is in dictionary so this is a very difficult word to find in dictionary or any kind of brute forcing thing is going to take a long long time to find it so if you paste this over here we click on decrypt there is a very low chance uh, that this hash will be found in the database because this is a very complex password. So this is the downfall MD5 because a lot of people when they use their passwords on Facebook and stuff they usually use like their month name or uh, something like that their birthdays and stuff which have already been kind of reverse looked up in MD5. So it's not that's why it's not a safe way. One of the safe ways to do is something known as salting. So salting is basically adding some stuff uh, let's actually change it to hello so that it's not that difficult to understand all right so it's kind of adding stuff a uh, salt is basically adding some kind of characters in front of your original string so let's say if we add a in front of hello we have added the character of a uh, the a salt in front of our original string so what we can do is we can encrypt it we can uh, kind of hash it using this hello and a and then we want to uh, kind of uh, let's say decrypt this hash we already know that we have encrypted this hash with this extra salt of a so now we can uh, kind of decrypt it but if you don't know the salt it's going to be very difficult for hackers and other people who sniff kind of passwords and stuff to kind of uh, make figure out what how, how to decrypt the hash so it's going to be very difficult for them so that's why that's where the salt comes in so in python there is this uh, pretty good uh, function it is a little bit slow but it's a pretty good function which is called pbkdf2 underscore hmac a very very weird name but uh, it is what it is it's a kind of it's a little bit famous kind of uh, salting algorithm so what we are going to do is we are going to be using this one so let's actually import the libraries that are required this the second library is actually for converting the binary to characters that is the ascii so that is what this binary is for so let's actually copy this 
Uh, and uh, let's paste it over here. You just saw my recording uh, software. I guess it's fine. Uh, and then we can just copy this from here and paste it maybe. I just don't want to do the work because it's already written over here, but I'm going to go into what this actually means. Um, so instead of all of this stuff, we are going to remove it. Actually, instead of removing it, let me just comment it out. And we are going to paste this over here. And then let's copy this one. And we are going to paste this again over here. All right, so what does this mean? So this, it requires a couple of parameters. If we go back to our uh, thing over here, it requires a couple of parameters. The first parameter is the name of the algorithm that we are going to use. So in this case, they are using SHA-256. And then the password is basically the text that you want to hash. So in this case, it will be hello. And then this is the sort, the character that you want to be added to this uh, password. That is the string that you want to hash. In this case, they are just called it salt. So the salt will be added to this password and then they will be encrypted using SHA-256. And this is the number of iterations it happens. So what is this number of iterations? It actually took me when I learned it for the first time, it actually took me a little bit of time to figure it out. Okay, so what this does is it takes the, for example, if we are doing MD5 and it gives us the value of this. Now what will be the MD5 value of actually this md5 value so it's kind of like a meta md5 value and what if we do it three times so md5 value of md5 value of md5 value so that happens three times so the number of iterations is three but what if we do this iteration a hundred thousand times that's crazy right and it's going to be very very difficult to find out like reverse engineer the passwords like computers with really really high cpu power can only do that so that's why in SHA-256 it is said uh, the 100,000 is normally required now. As you can see, it's somewhere as of 2013, at least 100,000 rounds of SHA-256 is suggested. Now it's probably more like 500,000 or something because it has a lot of time has passed in 2018. But yeah, we are gonna go with this example. Uh, let's actually, instead of this password, let's try out hello. And the last parameter that I forgot to tell you about is that this length of uh, the hash that is required. So in this case, if you call it just none, or if you don't put anything in, it's going to give you a 64 character hash, as it says over here. Uh, if DK length is none, you can, if you want, you can give it like 32 or something. Instead of this big one, you'll just get 32 characters. That's also fine, but it's a little bit less secure. But yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. So it's, let's just test this out and see how it looks. And this is, we are just going to print it out. So in this line, if you are not able to understand, it's just converting these. Uh, so this is kind of uh, taking these characters, hexifying it, and then this is converting it into uh, kind of ASCII form. So let's play this out and see how it looks. So as you can see, it gives us these characters, which is a pretty good hashing uh, thing. We can change this to something else. Instead of salt, we can just type in S and like click on play. And this one is going to be totally different. So if you don't know the salt, and if you don't know the number of iterations, it's going to be very, very difficult to uh, decrypt this hash. And that is the level of complication that we can uh, achieve in Python using just three lines of code. That's crazy, right? But yeah, that's the beauty of Python. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. Uh, just want to recap. There are different kind of algorithms like ND5, SHA-56. You can find them out. So sorting is basically adding characters or uh, just a string in front of the string that you want to actually hash or crypt. And then you can just uh, kind of, so I just want to maybe like tell you what is number of iterations again. So if we kind of uh, use this MD5 and it gives us an MD5 hash. And if we use that MD5 hash and we calculate the MD5 hash of that MD5 hash, it's going to give us a level above MD5 hash, kind of a meta MD5 hash, kind of like inception, right? MD5 of MD5 of MD5 instead of like dream of dreams of dreams of dreams. So, and when you are inside the dream a hundred thousand times, take that inception, uh, then you get this, uh, uh, salted beautiful password that's the beauty of cryptography you can do crazy amount of stuff and i haven't even dipped my uh, tipped my 
too into cryptography it's so interesting i used to do a little bit of cryptography a long time ago but it's just very interesting to me to just to learn about how people hide stuff how like if if you're in an nsa and stuff how <laughs> probably not in nsa <laughs> if you're watching this uh, video if you are wow okay but how people are just uh, just communicating how whatsapp is sending end to end encryption how whatsapp is just sending messages and it's encrypting it in between uh, make sure that nobody is listening in between crazy stuff so anyways guys this is pretty much it for this video make sure you subscribe and if you like this video make sure you leave a like i always feel like such a whore when i'm saying that please subscribe what the fuck anyways peace out